mentioned with drop shipping and even with the trends, how did you even go about finding trends? Right. Does that involve a, a lot of time spent on social media or, you know, doing the market research? Yeah. So, um, so it's crazy. So I actually learned how to turn my Instagram into a tool that finds products for me, mm. um, 24, seven, 365. So, and, and I'll give you all that strategy right now. Basically, you know, Instagram's the algorithm. You know, if you like cars and you go on Instagram, all you're going to see is cars. If you like sports and you go on Instagram, you go to the explore page, all you're going to see is like sports news, mm -hmm. et cetera. Like Instagram knows what you like. So I basically tricked Instagram into thinking that I liked all of these trendy and viral products. So and basically anyone can do that. So when you're on Instagram, anytime you see a drop shipping ad or like a product or a service, um, mainly like e-commerce products, like trendy viral products, anytime you see an ad of one of those, you need to like it or you need to comment on on the ad. I um, mean, mm. we see these all the time, mm -hmm. but most of the time we just skip past them. But if you start engaging with them and maybe commenting things like I want one or I'm going to order one or just bought one and you start doing that over a period of time, Instagram will start tailoring and showing you all those ads because mm -hmm. they think that you're a customer. So, you know, I did that for like a month or two. And now every time that I go on Instagram and I scroll down, I don't I don't see like the types of ads that most people see. I literally just see e-commerce products, like wow. products that people are running. So it's like my Instagram is literally a product research tool. I can go on there right now, scroll down, and I could see a product that someone's running right now that could potentially be going viral. And ways that I can check that that product is working for that per person is literally just checking the comment section and seeing what people are commenting. If you're seeing people commenting like, I just ordered one, or where's my order? things like that, then you know that that product is being ordered, people are buying it. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that you can do is, let's say you see a product, uh, you see someone running ads for a product, for you to run ads, you have to have a Facebook page. Yeah. Um, that's, how, that's how Facebook does it. You have to have a Facebook page in order to run ads. So let's say I see a product on my Instagram feed, um, someone's running a sponsored ad to a product. What I can do is I can go to facebook.com search up the name of that brand and it's always going to pop up in the top left i can go to their facebook page and if you scroll down there's something called page transparency and you can click on it and it's a law that facebook has where if you're running ads um you have uh, if you go to their facebook page it has to it has to show all of the active ads running mm. so like let's say i found a product on my instagram feed i went to their facebook page if i click on their page transparency it'll tell me if they're currently running ads or if they're not and if they are currently running ads, I can click on that and it'll show me all of the ads that they're running and the date that they started running them. Mm. So obviously if I see an ad today, you know, today's like July 30th, right? Um, if I see an ad today and I go to their Facebook page and I go to their page transparency and I see that this ad has been running since December of last year, obviously that product is making that money, right? Because they're not gonna run an ad from December all the way to July if it's not producing any type of revenue. Right. So that's, those are ways that we can find products that are going viral, that are working, that you can sell yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and vice versa, if you if it's July, you see an ad in July, and then you go to Facebook and you see that they just put it out, you know, July 29th, right. then you're probably thinking, let me give it a little bit more time right. to check back in. Exactly. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. So what if you could explain the difference between drop shipping and Amazon wholesale, and like the differences between because we had this conversation too, like one mm -hmm. being short term, the other one being long term, kind of help people understand the differences between the two. Uh, and if you had to do it all over again, which one you would start off with? Right. So the difference is drop shipping is the best business model for someone that may not have a lot of capital mm. or someone that is aspiring to build a brand maybe in the future. Because dropshipping allows you to get in the game with like a couple hundred bucks because the only money you need is the money for the marketing, the money for the ads. You don't need money for inventory because you're actually selling the product before you buy it. So let's say, for example, you know, I open up a, a Shopify account. Shopify has a 14 day free trial. After that, it's like $30 a month. Shopify allows you to build the website. Um, let's say I find a product that's going viral on Instagram using the strategy we just talked about. Let's say I found a makeup brush that's going viral, right? It's selling for 20. We can source it for $10 on AliExpress. I can list that makeup brush on my website for 20 and run ads to my website. And every time someone buys that makeup brush, that money, that $20 is directly deposited into my account. 
the next business day. So then I can take that money and then order the product from my supplier for 10 and my supplier ships it directly to my customer. So I never touched the product, I never held any inventory and I never used any of my own money. I'm leveraging the customer's money first. And because of that, that allows anyone to get into the game because you don't need upfront inventory mm -hmm. like most traditional businesses where you need to buy you know, 5K of product upfront and then you have to hope to sell it. Mm. That's why dropshipping is powerful. Right. And it's powerful if, you're, if you aspire to build a brand because you can start out dropshipping and then once you get traction and once you get that proof of concept that that product is selling, you can then private label it, brand it, and then you know actually get inventory and, and lower your cost and then start a brand. A lot of brands have started like this. Gymshark started like this, Blendjet mm -hmm. started like this, where at first they were drop shipping and they didn't have a brand name on the product and they saw that it was picking traction. They saw that you know people were actually buying it and they threw their brand name on it bought inventory and they scaled to where now they're, they're you don't they don't drop ship anymore but they started out drop shipping mm. so that makes a lot of sense so it's a very so regardless even if you had to do it all over again you would start off drop shipping yeah yeah because like even if you're watching this and you want to start a clothing line right it might not make sense for you to order a thousand shirts in bulk with a design if you haven't got the proof of concept that people want to buy that design right so maybe you start out drop shipping the shirts so you don't have to spend all that money on inventory and then maybe one day you run an ad and that ad goes viral or you shoot a video and that video goes viral and people are ordering like crazy then you can send out an email and say hey you know we're back ordered you know be patient we're, we're, we're gonna you know get inventory and most people understand and now you can order the product in bulk mm. from your supplier lower your cost and then moving forward you have your own inventory because you have the proof of concept that that design is going to sell mm -hmm. if you put marketing behind it rather than just thinking off the gate that it's going to sell just because of your gut, you know? Mm -hmm. That's so. interesting. And uh, you mentioned...